If you've ever wanted to really immerse your audience in the environment you're filming in, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to build a binaural microphone setup that will fit easily on top of a camera. And you are going to want to watch this video with headphones on because I recorded this entire video with a binaural microphone. Hey, my name is Jake Sloan and I make content here on YouTube all about helping solo creators like myself, especially people who are out and about create better content by doing tech reviews of equipment that will help you make better content and doing tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment to make better videos and take better photos so that you can get your stuff seen and heard. Also, after I show you how to build this one, I'm gonna give the one that I'm building away. So stay tuned to the very end of the video to find out how you can win this um, binaural audio microphone. Obviously, it's winter time. It's actually really cold. So most of this video is gonna take place back in my studio. But I wanted to give you an example of what binaural audio sounds like when you're out in the field recording. This is what binaural audio looks like. We're gonna go, we're going down there uh, into the abyss. So. We go through that way. Let's go that way. All right. A little lower ceiling, but you know. Whatever. That's the one we came up. No, we already came back into the main channel. One thing binaural is really great at is immersing your audience in the location you're in because it sounds like, especially if they listen with headphones, it sounds like they're sitting right in that location looking exactly where the camera is. And so if you notice that as I pan, the sounds around me change, whereas my voice stays pretty much in the center because that's where I am. It's not so good for presenting information when you want to isolate your voice away from the other noise, but it is fantastic for really immersing people into a location and um, letting them feel like they are exactly where the camera is sitting. And this is also great for ASMR style videos, which are yeah, a thing that people are interested in, I guess. Um, it is something that's kind of cool when you just have no voice, nobody talking, but just the sounds of the environment around you. So now that I've shown you a little bit about binaural audio and what it can do to help your videos out, I want to show you how to build this particular microphone, which is the one I was using. And it's relatively cheap, relatively expensive, like right around $100. Um, and the results are really fantastic what you can get with this. So to start off with, you're gonna need a plastic project box. Um, you can use any different size. I tried to get the smallest one that I can possibly fit everything into because um, I'm mobile and I wanna keep things small and lightweight. You're going to need the two uh, silicone ears. I'm using this stuff called Silpoxy by SmoothOn, but I think pretty much any silicone type glue will work. It's just you do want it to be silicone based glue, not something else because otherwise it will come off. You'll need this little quarter 20 to uh, cold shoe adapter. You need this, which is the um, Hosa splitter. So you basically brings left and right side together into the proper channels in your camera. You'll need a couple of washers or a washer and a nylon quarter 20 locking nut. You'll need a very short, like six inch to 12 inch headphone cable. 
and then you'll want two of these Mike J lavalier microphones and the reason I'm using these are they're inexpensive and they actually sound really good and shout out to Curtis Judge for turning me on to these. And then of course you're going to need a pair of pliers, a 7 16 inch wrench or an adjustable wrench to be able to tighten the bolts down when you get to that point. And then you're going to need a quarter inch drill bit and a 5 16 inch drill bit. Now the Mike J they give you a couple of these little foam windscreens. You definitely want to save them because we're going to end up tucking them into the ears to help a little bit with wind resistance. You won't need the microphone clips for this, but I would hold on to them just in case you want to use these microphones for something else. The reason I picked this particular box is you want something that's about the same width as the human head, and this is fairly close while maybe being a tiny bit small, it's still about right by the time you glue all these together. Step one is to drill the holes that we need and then glue these ears in place. And for that, we're gonna to wanna to use the 5 16 inch drill bit. And when you're drilling these ears or the other ears, the alternative that I put in there, you want to basically hit the spot that is the deepest in there. And so, and you really don't need to do much other than make a hole because actually the tighter it is and the more it seals around the microphone, the better because it helps to hold the microphone in place. Next, we want to figure out about where the ears are going to sit and then at least just mark it with a little scratch so we know where to drill. You wanna be careful not to damage the outer part of the ear because that is actually pretty important that it stays shaped the way that it is. All right, we've got one, two scratches. We're gonna go ahead and drill these holes real quick. Generally, since this is the front of the box, most camera manufacturers put their microphone in on the left-hand side if you're looking at the back of the camera. Then we're gonna to wanna to drill a hole right down in here for the microphone out cable. Same size drill bit. Since this is the bottom, we wanna drill the quarter inch hole right in the absolute center, or as close to the center as we can get it, for the quarter inch 20, the quarter 20 mount. That's all the drilling we needed to do. I'm gonna clean this up. Now before we glue everything on, there is one more thing you're gonna need, and it's something to scuff up the side a little bit, so some sandpaper or a sanding block like this one here, because you wanna give the glue something to adhere to really well. And so I'm just going to rough it up a little bit here and make sure it's nice and clean so there's not a lot of dust in there. And then another thing you might wanna do is actually put the quarter 20 mount through. And actually this is where it's helpful to have both pliers, pliers and the wrench because you can tighten it down really, really well while also keeping this nice and straight so that when you sit on your camera, it keeps it nice and straight. And the reason we do that is that sometimes it's nice to have something to hold on to or something you can still mount this to while you're gluing the ears on because you have to do one side at a time. And once you've done one side, it's a little bit more difficult to do the other side because obviously you have an ear here. So, but let's start gluing the ears. You wanna double check, make sure you have the right side. And if you're using this Silpoxy, um, a little bit goes a very long way, so. And then you wanna make sure you roughly, or fairly close, get the hole of the ear and the hole that you drilled lined up so that you won't have to um, move stuff around much later. And then give it a good firm press. And then we're gonna let this sit for about 10, maybe 15 minutes to let that glue kind of start to set up. I'd have let this sit for 10 minutes and it's set up pretty well. So now I'm gonna flip it over. I also inserted the headphone cable through and then I'm gonna use this little grip arm and hot shoe mount setup that I've got so that I can keep this like this and we're gonna glue the second side on here. The ears are now glued on. We're gonna run, you just need to run this cable through here. Depending on how long the cable is you got, you may need to coil it up a bit. This is a bit longer than um, I wanted, but it's what they had. Now, if you have a little bit of silicone or something and you know exactly the length you want outside of this here, you can go ahead and bead that up and fill that in if you want. I'm not going to right now, but I probably will later, just once I figure out the length the exact length that I want. The next thing is to poke your microphones through the holes that you drilled. And you wanna do that very gently and very carefully and just keep some pressure on the ears, especially if you haven't let them dry all the way yet. But you wanna just get them into the ear canal, not, not so far but just, just through where you can see the microphone head on the inside of the ear canal there. 
All right, so we got both microphones are in there. That's good. And this is probably the most difficult just because this cable that the Hosea uses is pretty thick. And then this whole piece here is actually quite long and thick, but it, you know, will work. So when you plug these in, for the most part, the red cable here is the right side and the black cable here is the left side, but you're gonna wanna plug it in before you close this all up and double check, make sure that that's correct. We have the red and the black plugged in and then we're gonna plug in the headphone cable or the extension cable. And then the challenging part of this is actually squishing all of this down inside of <laughs> the, the box. Um, but I do recommend trying to bend this out as much so that there's not as not too much pressure being placed on the lavalier cables. But like that will work because then you don't have a hard pressure point right here. Now you can pull this in and out if you need to, um, which is nice depending on your camera or depending on where you're mounting this. The next step is to put the back plate on and test this thing out. All right, so at this point, you have a working binaural audio microphone setup, but if you want wind resistance, you need to do one more step or maybe two more steps is the little foam covers that they sent with the uh, microphones. You wanna just tuck inside the ear canals, make sure the hole that the uh, was supposed to go over the microphone is down toward the microphone, but you don't need to push it all the way in. You just need to get it in there a little way so that it fills in that space. If you find that you're still getting wind noise, you can pick up a pair of these, which are technically cold, e cold weather ear warmers, but they will slip right over the ear, just like they would over your ear if you were outside walking. Now, if you're wanting to know how much wind resistance this offers, it's pretty easy. You can just blow past your ears. And then if you take one of these, place it over, it does make a fair amount of difference. In the beginning of this video, I said I'm gonna give this microphone away. And the way I wanna do that is, I wanna hear from you how you would use this microphone to enhance your videos and what type of stuff you would record with this microphone. Leave them in the comments below. Let me know. I'm gonna pick the best answer and get in touch with you to ship this microphone to you. Now, I put together a playlist right here of other ways you can enhance your audio, audio tutorials, how to get better audio, etc. So you click that. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, or ask questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Hope you're doing well. See you soon in the next video. Cheers.